It's Feedback Gaming. Time for another Kaiserreich Hearts of Iron 4 series. You guys asked for it. I am going to deliver. We are going to be playing as Iron Guard. Guard? Romania. Start off with Monarchist Threat, which loses national unity and some political power gain. Also, oil shipments to Germany. And these are the options. Re-militarize Altidia. Uh, national, renationalize the oil industry and conquer Transylvania. After Romania was defeated in the World Creek, the country was forced to sign the Treaty of Bucharest in 1918. The southern part of Dobrogia was returned to Bulgaria. Altelia was demilitarized and the oil fields were leased to Germany until 19, in 2012. Uh, when the king... When the king died after the war, um, the military took over the country. Eventually, their collaboration with the far-right parties would result in a violent takeover of the Nationalist Iron Guard in 1935. Led by the charismatic that guy, the new government looks to restore Romania to the former greatness, while it was also having to deal with the supporters of the monarchy who want to oust the new regime. So this is our leader. He is the leader of the National Populist, which this is going to make a few people a little bit mad in the comments, but I think falls more in line with National Socialism and Fascism and the far right. And this is Romania. Just to summarize, in the First World War, the First World War, not the Second, um, the Romanians lost, okay? Uh, they held out very well. They managed to hold on to their sovereignty, so they still exist as a country. And I believe they were holding out in Moldova here for a long period until for the war finally ended. And uh, they still managed to hold on to their sovereignty, as you can see. Uh, but sadly, they lost a lot of land, and they're under sanctions from Germany to strangling their economy. And uh, it's kind of a repeat of history uh, because of that, uh, because of the kind of Treaty of Versailles affecting... Uh, Germany has had a kind of a similar effect in Romania where it's pushed them all the way to the far right. And uh, yeah, and that's how, what we've got to say. That is Romania as of today. So this is our navy. It consists of a shitty old boats and subs. We'll put them on patrol, escort duty here. Uh, factory wise, we have five military and eight civilian. I think we'll just make two military for now. See so if you can see, we have got eight civilian, but we can only use two. One, that's because of civilian economy, those great toasters. And also, it is because of our national spirit, which 10% of our consumer goods are going to Germany as the form of oil shipments. Okay, so there are some really good, exciting options. This is probably the best one to go with initially. It gives you early mo mobilization straight off the bat. It is a good one, that one. Um, okay, I think we're going to go for something, I'm tempted to go for expand the ports because it gives you three, three free ports, free free, which is going to be good in the long run for more shipments of convoys, that gives us two synthetic oil, builds up our factory output, I do want to focus on this one first maybe. And this one gives us a little bit of political power. I guess the no-brainer is always to go for the one for the political power. So this is due to the, I guess, Article 12 of the Treaty of Bucharest, aka, in this case, Treaty of Versailles, quote-unquote, um, is restricting our movement into this province, Altenia. Altenia? Yeah, Altenia, we'll go with that. We also have a leader too. We have a few without portraits. I'm going to try and pick the ones without portraits. Sorry, with portraits. Because with the ones without portraits, kind of annoying. It kind of looks like you've not hired someone. Okay, so guns, supplies, trucks, artillery. Um, yeah. We do need a bit of everything. I think we're going to try and import some steel. We are going to try and import as much as we can. And let's go. Start off with a few bombers as well. It's good. Just letting out the people who run it. This is just the same screen we just had before, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the southern part of Dobrogi was returned to Bulgaria and Altetia was remilitarized. The oil fields were released to Germany until 2012. 
Yeah, I think we've read all this already. The death of Ferdinand in 1927, the military managed to effectively seize the range of government, installing the six-year-old Michael, Ferdinand's grandson, as their puppet king, completely bypassing Carl II, the late king's disgraced son. Of various of the various groups which collaborated with the military, the right-wing Iron Guard, led by a current ruler, which I will not pronounce, Cornelia, Cornello, Cornetto, proving the most dangerous. They managed to acquire more and more power in the state apparatus, eventually violently ousting the part of the military government still opposing them in 1935 and setting on Corinu up at the, as the new conductor. So that's kind of like the Fuhrer, the conductor. I'm not sure if this sound is different, but we'll go with conductor. While the young king fled to the country. So it was previously a monarchy and and the looks like the fascists have ousted the monarchists. Uh, now rules over the divided nation, uh, uh, promising to restore Romania to its former greatness, throw off the shackles of his oppression and be rid of its enemies by both foreign and domestic. The new future for Romania. Yeah, I usually like to play my games really fast. And I noticed from the comments that you guys like me to play fast too. Just because to like introduce to ourselves to the world of Kaiserreich, I'm deciding to read out a lot of the events. I think I did a few of those at the start of the rest of the game, but I didn't do them from there on in. The President of the Russian Republic, ever since its inception in 1970, Alexander Kerensky, Kerensky has just been shot and killed on the way to the Senate. Um, yeah, so this is just setting the... Setting the precipice of instability in Russia, causing uh, revolutions and civil unrest and maybe potentially a civil war. It might even cause the people, uh, the nations around them, to maybe try and invade Russia and split it apart. Union Day represents the union of princip principalities of Moldova <coughs> and Walchia. I think I'm saying that wrong. On the 24th of January, 1859. When Alexandru Ion Cruz was elected as the Domator Domita? in both principalities as a way to bypass the ruling that the two cannot unite, cannot unite into a single state. It is regarded as, as the national holiday in Romania. Gain some political power. Okay, good. Let's go. So we are a little bit behind in aluminium and rubber, which I can deal with. We are trying to get more factories. So Black Monday has happened where it causes the, the German Empire's economic hold on the world finally ends. So this is the war between uh, the Afghans and India after the Wheel Krieg as the British Raj collapsed into turmoil and warfare. warfare. Uh, the neighboring kingdom of Afghanistan took advantage of this opportunity to seize Peshawar and Quetta. Both bordering... Oh, it's gone. Well, it just gives you an explanation of backstory between the reasons why there's instability in the Indian subcontinent. Remilitarization of Altenia. Armed forces of Romania moved into Altenia despite the Bucharest Treaty of 1918 forbidding them to do so. The Iron Guard regime of Romania hailed this as an important step to restoring Romania to its former greatness. It remains to be seen whether they will uphold other stipulations of the treaty. It's our land. That's right, it is. Okay, so this gives us claims on Transylvania, which we won't take advantage of immediately. Um, no, we won't. So I'm going to go for establish the Kubib. Kubib. The Iron Guard organizes, organized in chapters called Nest, which are organized around virtues of discipline, work, silence, education... Um, mutual aid and honor. We can expand these chapters so in every working man knows the duty of their country. So yeah, it is kind of like, yeah, it feels to me like, almost like a, a cult meets fascism, but I think fascism is kind of a cult, right? So we can increase national popularism. I think I'm going to go no on that one because I want to sit on my political power as much as possible. Our popularity is 50%, 51% for national populists. So this is the organization of all the, the far left part, the socialists, the national socialists, uh, not the national socialists, the uh, radical socialists, um, the communists, the totalists and whatnot. And that sets the, the picture for uh, a lot of the Soviet communist, not Soviet, the, the communist far left party is being more militaristic. So do we go for mechanized radio? 
So I've got to decide at this point where I want to go for. Do I want to go for a mobile route? Which is always a smart one. I think we'll go for superior firepower for something a wee bit different. But in that case, we're going to need the artillery really badly. Actually, artillery is not going to be a good idea because we've not got a lot. All we have a lot of is oil. So in that case, probably going for artillery is not smart. We are probably better off going for a more mobile army, aren't we? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to go for mechanized. I'm, not on, I'm undecided at the moment. I feel like I might go really heavy on the motorized. I'm not sure. We'll see. We are far behind on guns. I think I'll start training now as well. So there's two kinds of cavalry. There's one with artillery and one without. I think I'm going to go the one with... The Soviet Union has declared war on Russia. So it does appear that the unrest and the Soviets have taken over. This doesn't look like there is, isn't there? Oh, they are. The Second Russian Civil War. I'm going to go for you. I'm going to place you here in Bucharest. So the Second Russian Civil War, mere 20 years in the past years of the World Krieg, the Russian Empire collapsed in turmoil, ripped apart between the nationalist movements, the Whites and the Reds. After the German intervention, the Republic government defeated the Bolishkiks. Oh my goodness, I feel like I should know how to pronounce that. And it appears that the Russian Revolution spirit was not exhausted. So uh, these represent the people who are the communists, don't they? The kind of the workers. I, I feel like I know that word, but for some reason it's it's fallen flat in my head. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so the Soviets are at war again, but strangely enough, they don't appear to be at war with anyone. It's like they've just completely taken over. Yeah, there's no war. It looks like the Soviets have just been completely decimated everything. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Alright, so we do have some planes, we have some naval bombers too. I think we're not going to move them, we'll keep them where they are. Yep, yeah. okay, that's good. Um, popularity is rising, more national populist? No, I'm going to keep saying no to that because we need more stability first. We get more stability in this game by getting over 450 political power. And then an event fires that lets you gain extra stability for losing the 150 political power. Okay, that's great. Uh, Entrench the pie. So this one gives me 100 political power and 20 nationalist populists. So that will make us at 71%. So that will give us not only more leverage for party popularity, but it will also give us more stability too. Nick Nikola Ioga, Ioga is the prominent Romanian historian and intellectual that has been a thorn in the sign of the Iron Guard since taking over. Rumor has it that he and others have founded a secret intellectual group, the Bucharest Circles. Intellectuals in my country? No, I don't think so, guys. I don't think so. He must be stopped. The Arab Congress. The Arab Revolt in the World King was a failure, mostly due to the defeat of the Entente. The millions of Arabs living in the Levant and Iraq ruled under the, the Ottoman rule. Despite this, though, the Arab nationalists have rise for many years and is finally copulated, communicated into the beginning of the Arab Congress in Cairo, represented from numerous. Um, so, what's happening is one of our cabinet is not a national populist. He's a paternal autocrat so he wants to change and we'll let him we'll, we'll, it's only five percent actually it's two percent wasn't it so this is just giving you an impression that there is instability in the middle east and it looks like that the arab nations are going to be they're going to turn on the turn on the big power of the ottoman empire to try and end the dominance of the ottoman empire in the middle east Okay, so we've increased the construction. I think we'll go for support weapons. So, I could take on Hungary, and that is an option. They're actually relatively weak, but they are a puppet of Austria. So the Austrian-Hungarian Empire has been dismantled, but the remnants of it still are puppets. Okay, so that's a puppet of Hungary, and that's a puppet of Austria. And Austria. So Austria has a puppet which is Hungary. And Hungary has a puppet which is Croatia. Interesting. 
Serbia's free and Montenegro is a part of Austria too. And Albania is a puppet of the Ottomans. What? They're so far away. Popularity increasing 5%. I oh, don't bother. Don't bother. The party's been entrenched now. That's good. Okay, so I think I need to start focusing on my industry. I think we are going to go for the port construction. Yeah, yeah. So the purpose of this is to get more convoys. Because at some point in the game, we're going to start importing a lot of materials. And we're going to need to have a lot of convoy. Because right now, we're using 50 of our 20 convoys. 15 of our 20 convoys. Um, just for importing goods. So I need to make sure we've got a bit of a... A surplus. Okay, so due to the fact that we've gained extra 20% extra national populace, we've gained a little bit more popu popular popularity. Party popular popularity. <laughs> PP. Yeah, so in that case we get more political power per day. We've got a load of political power now. There we go. So it gives you an option to increase stability. We lose consumer goods. We don't. Sorry, we don't need to use as much consumer goods, and we also get more factory and national unity. Yeah. Well, the way this is going to work, guys, for this series is that is a one province state. Just that one. I wonder why that is. A breakup of the Bucharest Circle. After being tipped off to the meeting place of the Bucharest Circle, we raided the building and they were using a hideout and imprisoning most of the members. Lose political party, which reduces research for, ten, for, for a year. Ooh. That's actually quite nasty, that. Those intellectuals with their thinking and their new ideas. That'll never catch on, right? Right, making some more factories now. Therefore, we're pumping out more guns. In that case, we're going to need more artillery. I think we might be needing to import some more tungsten. Yeah, we'll do that. No, we can't. We haven't got any more imports. Okay, so we've extended the ports, which is good. Uh, the Second American Civil War. The un to uneducated foreigners, it might seem like the crisis of the United States happened out of nowhere, but experts agree that this was a civil war years in the making. Ever since the collapse of New York Stock Exchange in 1929, the economy of the United States has been on a constant downturn. The government of Herbert Hoover failed to cope with the American Great Depression. You get the idea. You can pause the video if you really want to watch, uh, read all these events. Okay, so we're going to go for the refineries now because I want to get this research slot. Do I have to get all of those? So that one requires one of the following. So go for one. So we either go for industry boost and 10 oil, which we don't need. Or we go for factories. Oh, we're definitely going for the factories. Riots and protests in the... Rangoon University. This satisfaction with the lack of popular involvement in the government has sparked some of the greatest demonstrations in Burma since their own independence in 1929. Sent from the great and prestigious Rangoon University, radicalized leftist students have occupied several administrative buildings and held rallies denouncing the monarchy and its feudal backers as being corrupt. Hmm, okay. Okay, that's a new event. I've not seen that one before. So let's have a look at the American Civil Wars. It's divided into four factions. The kind of United States greater. The uh, the leftists, syndicalists. The independent, kind of neutral New Englanders. Which are kind of paired up with Canada. The American Union state, which are paternal autocrats. So they're obviously more authoritarian. And then there's the this this is kind of like a puppet, I think. I think it's a puppet. No, it's not actually. Oh, they're actually at war. Maybe there's some kind of option in the game to actually um, <clears throat> to either break away or fight in the civil war. I haven't seen these guys attack the United States before. This is new to me. So in this case, the Pacific Island states. Oh, interesting. I thought. Alaska was part of that, but it's changed now. Okay. And Hawaii is independent too. I thought Hawaiian was part of the Pacific States too, but they're not. Interesting. Alright, okay. 
I think we're going to rush ahead with all the construction tech and industry tech. Oops. There we go. Good, good, good. So right now, our car economy, seven of our production is coming from exporting oil, which is not a vast surprise, is it really, with the fact that we're a we're an oil nation. Yeah, so we use, all our homeland economy is being used now. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Let's go five speed again. The syndicalist uprising in Milana. After the Philippines have uh, peacefully achieved independence from the United States due to the chaotic civil war, their young commonwealth is already facing dangers of syndicalism. Inspired by both combined syndicates and uprisings in America by the Batania Commune in India, a group of disgruntled army officers have ordered their units to march towards the capital, where they have joined forces with a band of peasants and industrial workers. They plan to establish a socialist republic of the Philippines. An archipelago. Very nice. And they're mainly at the moment social liberals. So that could change. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to go for infrastructure. So it's going to be 70, 40, 210 days before we can move on. Actually, no, it's going to be a bit longer than that because we've only just started this one, haven't we? Okay. I think what's holding us back the most is artillery, because we've not got any tugsten. Yeah, we already pumped out some uh, cavalry with artillery too. Good, good, good. All right, good. I think we're producing just enough now. I don't want to go a little bit too overboard making new divisions, so I think we'll stick to what we've got. If we couldn't make another division, I think we could make some more standard. Yeah, we'll go for more standard. Union Day, gain more political power. Construction-wise, how are things going? Looks pretty good. Okay, a new event's just fired. The crisis N W Danbu. Despite the victory of Wilkie, the austro hungarian appeared to be bound to collapse. The Austerly Augustly of 1927 negotiate when Emperor Otto was still a child managed to preserve it though, by the granting extensive rights to most of the minorities in the empire. However, the, the Hungarians were enraged angered by the fact that it sought to establish a domineering position in, in the empire. While the Habsburgs were still interested in remaining that role, many put their high hopes in the August Lee of 1937 to preserve the monarchy, but it appears that all diplomacy has failed. Hungary and Austria have separated and even gone into conflict with one another, a war that is bound to affect any of the autonomous territories of the empire. So they've all declared war on each other. Let's have a look. Yep, it's not looking too good for Austria. I'm going to give it that. I would really, really like to attack Hungary right now. That would be so good. Is there a way that I can cheese this? Because if, if this finishes, what I could do is I could go for claim Transylvania and attack them immediately. Yeah, I think I'll do that next. Oh, shit, we've even got an option to do that. Oh, damn, son. We have the option. Now that that chaos has engulfed the Austro-Hungarian Empire, we have the opportunity to reclaim Transylvania. Oh, shit. Guys, when in doubt, let's go for it. We have gone to war. Guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, Remember to like and subscribe. If you want more Kaiser Rai, Hearts of Iron 4 content, please hit that like button. Let me know in the comments below. And also, guys, if you are going to subscribe, make sure you turn on notifications to be notified in future. Also, let me, guys, do you, do you enjoy the fact that I'm reading out all these events? Or am I reading too much? Am I reading too little? Let me know in the comments. Apart from it, guys, I'm, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Have a really good day. See you soon. Bye-bye.